So hi, Freddy, how are you? I'm very good, thank you, how are you? I'm fine, I'm, I'm so happy to be here today with you. And before we start talking about the movie we are going to talk about today, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself briefly, would you? Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is Freddy, I'm from Manchester, uh, but I currently live in Barcelona. I've been teaching English for about three and a half years on and off. Uh, my main job is acting and singing, um, which I tend to do going to doing tours around Europe and Britain and Spain, etc. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know about me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Freddie. So we are here today to discuss a very interesting movie and I, I would like to say thank you for recommending this movie to me. It's named Life of Brian. And um, yeah, so the f I have a question for you. Is this uh, a very famous British movie? Yeah, so in, in, in Britain, this is what we call a cult film. So it, it, I, mean, I would say um, the, the, the group Monty Python are very, very famous in Britain. They have a TV series called Monty, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Um, the, some of the actors such as uh, John Cleese have gone on to be what we call national treasures. Um, and big, big, big stars within Britain. So Monty Python was one of the, the first real cult comedy films and, and series in, Brit in British TV, I think. And is it still on? Yeah, no, everyone likes Monty Python. Uh, the series you, is, not, is not streaming or not live on TV and things. Um, but you will see every so often the, the films, they have quite a few of the Life of Brian, the Holy Grail, etc. They the these films are on TV quite quite often, quite regularly. Amazing. And mm -hmm. it is a movie from 1979. Yeah. Right? It is a quite, quite old. old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 40. Um, yes. So that's when they were around. That's when they were really starting to, to get into it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I love that movie. At first, it, it, it seemed a little bit odd, weird, but after 10, 15 minutes, I was very in, into the story. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. wow, and I was laughing and wow. So the movie is the story of Brian. Brian is this um, Jewish Roman man who was born the same day as Jesus. He's next door to Jesus. Uh, and, at, and he is a mistaken or the Messiahs, the Messiahs? Messiah. Messiah. Uh, the Messiah. Messiah. Basically, yeah, he, he yeah. spends his whole life, he's kind of around the vicinity of Jesus. And obviously it, it's kind of a good commentary on, on at that time, you know, without television, without um, news and things like that. Um, there was kind of, there were a lot of what we call prophets and religious um, Messiahs. Um, each with a following as crazy as the next, um, and it, it was so it was kind of playing on the idea of of how anyone could have been the Messiah. Anyone could have, you know, it happened to Jesus allegedly, but it, it it's something that that it was only a matter of time before one of them became well, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, and something I read about the movie, I was searching for this conversation, it was that when the movie was first released, it created a huge polemic? Uproar, there was a huge uproar. Um, uproar. It, uproar, yeah, and, and uproar is, yeah, when, when everyone's like, when everyone complains about things. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, the Catholic Church is not famously good at humor um and um you know the very top it's a, it's quite a serious accusation they take jesus very seriously um and if you read wrongly into the nar narrative of the, the the film you can see why analogs were made with with you know jesus and and, and brian um and i think that was vaguely on purpose um, but not so much to, to criticize Jesus, but more to criticize the reaction to this kind of, uh, you know, a false prophet or uh, people follow anyone. I mean, you look at yeah. some of the cults and religions we have now, uh, yeah. the United States is a fantastic example. Um, it's a, it's a commentary on the uh, people and how easily people are led. Um, and I think it's really clever how they do it. Um, but 
you can see with the you know the the references to Jesus, the similarities to this kind of thing, the fact that um, of the prophets around that time, um, Jesus is the only one that's really still recognized. Um, so you can see why, without watching the film, which very few in the Catholic Church did, and they would jump to those kind of conclusions. So it, it kind of makes sense. I can I can see where it came from. No, 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 totally, totally. And um, yeah, and surprised me the fact that it was still on the theaters back then, 40 years ago. Do you think, do you know, did you know that the Biro, the ex, the Biro George Harrison, he has, he financialed the movie somehow? He financed the movie. Yeah, so Monty Python are a really interesting group. There's definitely much more you can go into research wise. Um, they were a big group of friends um, they just enjoyed making movies. So you'll see they have the same characters, the same actors, sorry, playing different characters throughout the film. And that's a big theme of their, their, their kind of brand, as it were. With Monty Python's Flying Circus, the series, it's a, it's a series of sketch shows. So they have small sketches yeah. about, about lots of different things. And my favorite yeah. personally is the Dead Parrot sketch, as it for many people. Um, but so, so they, they're very, they were very good at kind of finding the silly in quite an intelli quite intelligent topics. I mean, some of the yeah. things they, they talk about and do are very, very cleverly satired. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, at that time, it was, it was a big, it, there was a big backlash to this. There's a really good interview you can watch on YouTube about the backlash. Uh, Monty Python then made a sketch taking, like uh, satirizing the backlash, which was very well done. Um, so they're not very good at being serious. Um, but you know, it's it's a film of this nature was always going to be taken in one of two ways, either really well or really badly. Um, you look at, I mean, nowadays you have um, the the things like the Book of Mormon, the musical that the South Park directors brought out, which is again another uh, commentary on religion. But the Mormons took it in a much better way. They they actually took out an advert in the program, so this kind of thing. Um, 40, 50, 60 years ago, that kind of, uh, there was a lot, there were a lot more stronger feelings towards religion yeah. back then, you know, I would say yeah. that the world is becoming progressively less and less religious, or at least progressively more and more maybe logical about it, um, with obviously some exception. Um, so I think, I think the time it was, it was, a, it was absolutely groundbreaking because nothing like this had been done, mm -hmm. um, especially with humor. And I think that was one of the things that, that drew up almost the most criticism because it's very easy to do that kind of very serious, you know, Christ is born kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas to, sat to satirize that and to do it well and to have what we call a leg to stand on when it comes to not, you know, not being banned and things like that, um, takes quite a lot of skill. It's quite a difficult thing to do. Um, and I, I personally, I think they did it brilliantly. No, definitely. Um, could have got horribly wrong. <laughs> yes. I know you speak Portuguese. I would like to recommend to you, um, we have we have something similar to Monty Python in Brazil. Do you, have you heard of Porta dos Fundos? Oh. No. So they, they, they were inspired by the Monty Python. Um, yeah. And they 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 create catches for YouTube, and also they have created movies criticizing, satirizing the catalotic, 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 Catholic, 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 Catholic. Catholic Church as well. And as I was watching, I have heard that they were inspired by the Monty Python, uh, but I have never actually seen them before up until now. So thank you for that. And as I was watching, I was like, oh, wow. So I understand where they took inspiration from. So as I was watching as well, as we said, 40 years ago, that movie was made and, and released. I was thinking, because now when they, every year they produce a documentary, a doc, not a documentary, a movie, uh, mm -hmm. rereading the, the life of Jesus somehow. I don't know if you say to reinterpreting, I don't know. And we it is to reinterpret the life of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So it is always with humor and it is funny with satire, but every year they have a lot of lawsuits 
people, they are still bothered by that. And there are some episodes that went on YouTube that they had to remove because Catholics or Christians, they were very offended. And as I was watching, I was like, wow, it is the same type of humor. And people back then, I mean, they didn't, I mean, they obviously thought it was blasphem blasphemy, blasphemy, but they, it was still blasphemy. on. It was still on back yeah. then, 40 years ago. So now we have problems with that, you see. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. And obviously the, there, is, there should never be an intention to offend people. No. But I do think with things like, with things like religion and, and, and politics and things where you, know, you choose to, to believe in these things uh, to an extent, I feel that the, the criticism of, especially organized religion, is is vital if we're going to have um you know you know a better world for people and a better kind of life you need to be able to criticize everything yeah you know if for example um you know the royal family the the government the 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 religious religious people non-religious people you know everyone everyone should be able to be criticized if they've done bad things yeah. um it's very prevalent at the moment with the death of um prince philip um that there is still this kind of sycophantic um, need for people in power, people bigger than us, people, you know, there are a lot of people who like to be followed. And um, whether we agree with that or not, it, it's something that should be explored. But when, when those things, those organizations do things that are wrong, they should be as open to criticism as the rest of us. I mean, especially the Catholic Church, you know. <laughs> Um, that, uh, you know, without going into much detail, I think the Catholic Church should be as criticizable as me, as me or you. You know, it's it's, and I think as well, if I do something wrong, I should be criticized. So I, it's, I think it was a necessary film, especially at the time. I think it was very important, and I think it's paved the way for this kind of ability to discuss things and have that open yeah. dialogue. Yeah, you know which isn't always there with, with certain aspects of religious thinking. Amazing. Amazingly said. I agree with you. Yes, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have seen this movie. I understand why it is a huge success and um, it is considered to be like the greatest comedy of all time. And I certainly want to rewatch the movie because at first it, it felt like, what? what is this? I don't understand. It's, it's a little bit crazy. Like it's... Yeah. it's it's very, very British humor. I have, I've yeah. watched it with a few American friends who just did not understand yeah, any of it. Yeah, no, like yeah. Any of it. Yeah, um, yeah know, I so have a friend, I have a friend from South, Southampton, I always forget his city, and we were discussing this movie, and then he said, Americans don't get it, and then I was like pretending I was getting everything, but I wasn't, I was like, but I do. <laughs> but that's normal. I mean, the, the thing with British and American humor is it's very different. I mean, I would yeah. say, I would say British English. There's a, there's a difference between British English and American English in that a lot of American English is very much if they say something, that's what they mean, which is not the case in Britain. If I if I if I say anything, it could have layers of subtext and irony and sarcasm. And sometimes when we're in Barcelona, if I'm with an English person, we can be joking for a good fifteen minutes before anyone else realizes that we're not being serious. <laughs> um, it's great fun. It's really, really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that happens with American. It's a, it's a different type of humor. Um, mm. a different, you know, there's a lot of differences. They yeah. say we're two separated by a common language. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yes. Patty, I wanted to say thank you for this lovely conversation. I love to watch the movie and lo I love talking to you. And I hope to talk to you soon about other things and other movies. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting film because it is hilarious, but it's also very easy to talk logically about it. It's quite an interesting take. Um, yeah. But no, it was a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Um, yes. So I wish you a good week and we'll talk soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me know if you need anything um, and you. I will send you that book as well. No, yeah. Um, and I'll send you the link to Porta do Sondo so you can. You, you love it, I bet. Yeah. Cool. No, brilliant. Thank you very much. Bye. Wonderful. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and speak to you soon. Thank you.